well-paved thoroughfares, long circuitous railway lanes, cable trains rumbling by, flyovers crisscrossing. The Filipino way of life has become so fast-paced as it continues to be encompassed by technological, social, cultural, as well as aesthetic upheavals of the 21st century. The Filipino abode and workplace of yesteryears have given way to towering condominiums and skyscrapers racing to touch the high heavens. Skyscrapers whose walls reflect the skies as if by doing so they could bring heaven to earth. Many of the city-born youth of today, immersed in all of these architectural innovations, don't have the slightest inkling of Filipino life before all these started. To them, nothing came before the skyscrapers. Thanks to Vigan Ilocosur, there is something to teach the youth of today of how life once was in these islands, to make them appreciate their nation's history so they are better grounded and equipped in dealing and coping with contemporary modernizing forces. Founded in 1572, Vigan in the province of Ilocos Sur is a well-preserved example of a Spanish town transported to East and Southeast Asia of that time. Vigan was already a bustling trading post in the Asian region when the Spaniards came. The Spaniards improved the existing structures and made Vigan an essential part of the galleon trade, flying the Philippines-Europe route via Acapulco, Mexico. This secured Vigan's stature as the most prosperous town north of Manila, up to the close of the Spanish rule in the Philippines at the turn of the 20th century. Vigan was an international maritime port, and this warranted that the town's infrastructure be suited to its port's needs. Spanish authorities implemented what was known as the Ley de las Indias. It was a code that regulated the design of Spanish town in the Philippines. It called for low-slung houses to form a solid wall along both sides of the long straight streets. The ancestral houses of Vigan were fine specimens of the Bahay na Bato architecture. The Bahay na Bato is characterized by an upper level living area while the lower level was used as a bodega or storehouse usually meant for farm produce. For the more affluent families, the lower level was also used as a garage for the horse-drawn family carriages and later on the family car. There are about 192 ancestral houses and historic buildings in Vigan that have since been declared as protected historic structures. 129 of these structures were built prior to the year 1900. Among these structures, 130 ancestral houses have both the upper and lower levels built of brick and masonry. The rest of the houses have brick or masonry, lower levels, and upper level made of timber. Presently, concerted efforts by the local government of Vigan along with civic organizations and the townspeople are being undertaken to restore and maintain these magnificent structures. In 1997, the local government of Vigan enacted the Municipal Order No. 12, delineating specific historic zones and protected buffer zones for these ancestral houses. Three years later, Municipal Order No. 4 came out providing conservation and preservation guidelines for Vigan's historical houses. It stipulated some simple maintenance and repair to be done with these heritage houses. Parts of Vigan today have given way to progress as any other city would do to keep up with the pace. But Vigan succeeded in retaining its colorful heritage and let it coexist with progress. <laughs>